we got to home back fights 15. <laughs> and so I had to say to my staff and to the people who are questioning the students' content, we have to change what they're doing. We have to get them to think about curation, selecting, organizing, choosing. You know, before you post, pause, think about it. Is that how you want people to see you? Because I know you did that this morning when you put on those blue socks. Now, design the power tools. Which tools are the best? That's up to you to find. We're all in different circumstances. We all have different things to cook with. I'm a teacher, and I've been very fortunate in the last two years that I've started to use Twitter, YouTube, Google, Google Docs, Dropbox, Tablet Learning so that I can get a first-hand experience of what tool will be the best, because that same tool that works for this class is not the same tool that I may use next year. So after you create the content, they have to design and develop and decide what is that best work? What is that going to be that project that tells my story? Is it going to be a video? Is it going to be a video and a PowerPoint, or these days a keynote. Now, my students, they love the iPad. When I first brought it to the classroom, it was like, whoa! Reminded me of that old Max Dow commercial where the guy turns on the, the, the radio and his, he gets blown back. And at first, I was happy that they we're excited about it. And then I took a step back and I said, wow, you see this is a luxury? This is a power tool. What are you going to do with it? Because if it's a luxury, they're going to play Angry Birds. They're going to honeymoon with it. But if now they see it as a learning device, they now own their learning. It's the editor who learns. That's what's wrong with schools. Teachers are in the driver's seat. They're curating. They're sharing. They're creating, they're curating, they're sharing. And the kid is just bored because they're like, I want to drive. <clears throat> Hold on. Because, you know, I'm a nerd. I want to tell you everything. I want to explain everything. And then by the time it's your turn, bell rings. Sorry to get them all. The last piece of this workflow is to share it. So after you've decided what is your best work, I'm going to share it. And I started with podcasts in 2006. Somebody showed me Podomatic. And I'm like, wow, you can put it on iTunes? I can get a global audience? I can see the stats of who's listening to me? That's good information I want to learn about. So I started becoming more vested in my share. And then it just overlapped to curate the content, the, the, the creating, the sharing, all became one to tell my story. So I'm like a DJ, and that's my metaphor. I just started DJing in 2008. I had some students come to me, hey, Mr. Newton, buy a DJ set. All right, let's do it. So we buy the DJ set, and uh, I started to make connections and I saw that the students were selecting songs for certain events. And so it did introduce this idea of curating, choosing, organizing. What's going to make the people move? What are you going to play when the mayor comes out and gives his speech? And then sometimes you do have to listen and turn off the beats to go a cappella like I opened up and just sing from the heart. So, share. Broadcasted somehow. Podcasted, the new term. My favorite, tweet. And then plus one, plus it, Google Plus. So many ways to share this critical thinking, this curation, this creation of content for our students to become more mindful in the 21st century. To be mindful is to know what's going on now. So, design with a purpose. I want my students to advance. 
in order for me to be the best teacher, because I can't stand and do nothing, I do need to stay three or more steps ahead. But definitely, and to stick to the script and not just go everywhere, just because somebody says this is a good program. If I believe music is what works for me and my students, I'm going to stick to that. And um, I, I like the word learning over education. To learn is action. I want my students to have critical minds, and I do want to get ready for my Prezi, which will kind of bring everything together. I'm a teacher. I like to review. So this is the review of what I've posted on my chalkboard here, of that workflow of create, curate, and my favorite, share. So if we can queue up the Prezi, that would be excellent. So. I got a four second delay. We're going to autoplay it, and that leaves me with the rest of this. Here we go. My story, I'm a skateboard, a nerd, a poet. And my story starts with this. Students were sharing their talents, singing, showing me what they're doing. They're creating constantly in other classes with me, other friends. I told you the example, the content of the fights. I had to change that. I had to give them access to not only just college, but whatever they wanted to find and explore. I saw Sal Khan using the Wacom tablet. I said, I want to bring that. I've always been non-traditional, always, always getting into trouble. Thinking of new ways to learn and fight crime, though, because I want to engage students so that they can find their greater purpose and innovate. This is how I keep it simple. I dream big every day. And I'm glad to be here at the Big Ideas Fest so I can have other big ideas be absorbed. This is what I run. Check this out, Academic Artist Project. YouTube it, I got some good content. And um, this is just some of the video that I have on YouTube, but. Again, discover and define, create, find what is going to get you excited. Use videos, use art, and that's why I'm the Academic Artist Project. To me, that is how I engage kids. Second step, curate, choose, organize. This is the school I teach at Hollaback Junior High School. It's gonna be 100 years old this, this uh, coming up. And we also have this global vision. I started doing podcasts in 2006. As I mentioned today, I'm doing YouTube videos and creating playlists. DJing is what helped me practice this art of curating so that I can become a better curator. This past summer, I became a YouTube star teacher so that I continue to become the best at my craft and so that I can be the voice of the teacher because definitely, I agree, the voice of the teacher needs to get louder. Too many people are speaking on my behalf. So I appreciate you listening to me. Students are looking for answers all the day. They're curious. They have great questions that I can never think of. They are tomorrow's leaders. As I mentioned, you must pause and post. There are students that think about social media differently. Come up with a checklist for them so that they're not just posting anything. Maybe it's, in this tweet, you must have 140 characters and everything must be spelled correctly. And I would also say, get students to solve and collaborate. Collaboration is key and it is going to be tough. And my favorite is this mindfulness that we need to create for the students. I do have it defined here, pulled it straight off from a dictionary, just to get it going. And I know it's moving on the four second delay, but 15 minutes I gotta make sure we recover and go over some of the things that we have in my presentation. MadPad is an app that I think you can do some great things with. You can record sight words and get students to manipulate and get more involved with their own creations. On the iPad, I believe it's an infinite tool you can do endless things with it. There I am, you'll see a lot of my branding with this um, so that our students can show the world what their gifts are. There's no sound, but Mad Pat, there's my example. And so my story ends here. Thank you.